In the near future, Earth is slowly being destroyed by overpopulation and pollution. In search of a new place to live, scientists put their eyes on Mars and send unmanned probes with algae that were bioengineered to grow there. For 20 years this algae builds an atmosphere for humans to breathe in, but one day all of a sudden, oxygen levels start to drop. Desperate to find out why, all countries put their resources together to send the first manned mission to Mars. The ship is called Mars 1 and it's too massive to launch from the surface of the planet, so the crew shuttles to the high orbit space station for a low gravity launch to begin a six month trip. This crew is formed by the best scientific minds, pilot and commander Bowman, chief science officer Chantilis, co-pilot Santon, mechanical systems engineer Gallagher, bioengineer Birchinal, and terraforming expert Petangil. Coming with them is also Amy, a multitask robot that will work as their Mars surface navigator. Amy is powered by a helium nuclear power cell that will keep it going for a while. For the following six months, the crew finds different ways to keep themselves busy when they aren't working. Chantilas likes to talk a lot about philosophy and religion, explaining he needs some big questions to be answered because science has failed him. Gallagher likes to flirt with Bowman a lot and doesn't hesitate to walk on her in the shower, pretending it was an accident. He is also the one in charge of the pre-launch diagnostics checks on Amy. Pettingal wants to see the robot in action and asks Gallagher for a demonstration, so Gallagher decides to prank Pettingal. He changes Amy from navigation mode to military mode before giving it a marker and asking it to attack his friend, then Amy proceeds to very quickly stab Pettingle to show off how deadly it is. Eventually they get so bored of being up there that Gallagher and Birchinal begin using the lab to make alcohol. At first, Bowman scolds them when she finds out, but then she joins them and the whole crew ends up drinking together. On day 182, the ship finally approaches Mars orbit. The crew beings looking for Hab 1, the automated habitat where the probes were supposed to be growing the algae, when they suddenly get hit by a gamma burst. Commander Bowman sends the rest of the crew to the safe area while she keeps an eye on the system, and they wait for the burst to pass. Moments later, they discover the main power unit is offline, so they'll have to leave for Mars now and look for HAB-1 on foot. Once the crew is ready, Bowman tries to activate the extension vehicle's auto-launch system but it doesn't work because of the lack of power, so she has to stay behind and do it manually. The vehicle has a clumsy lunch and Santon has trouble landing, meaning he has to get rid of their landing gear and Amy. He does manage to release the airbags, but when they finally land on Mars, the vehicle stills rolls down a hill and takes serious damage. Meanwhile Bowman discovers that there are electrical fires in several sections of the ship but the burst destroyed the automated fire extinguishers. She rushes to grab the manual extinguisher to take care of the smallest fire, then she straps herself to the emergency evacuation unit before opening a hatch. This way the vacuum sucks the fire out of the ship. Then she works on getting the main power unit restored. On Mars, the crew has to help Chantilas leave the vehicle because he was injured when he landed. Without Amy they have no way to navigate the planet and find HAB-1 without getting lost, not to mention the radio and the science package are broken. Gallagher remembers he has some panoramic photos the probes used to send and compares them with the terrain, this will allow them to find the right way. Chantilas thinks about all his philosophical questions and accepts his fate, so he asks the crew to leave him there. His spleen's ruptured and there's serious internal bleeding, even if HAB-1 has a medical unit he won't make it in time. The crew says their goodbyes and Chantilas admits he's happy he at least got to see Mars. Nearby, Amy comes out from the landing gear and sends a drone to find the crew. On the ship, Bowman manages to make communications work again, but since the guy's radio isn't working, she can't get in contact with him. Then she uses the scanners to find HAB-1, only to find some bad news. She has no choice but to call Houston and inform them the crew won't survive. The crew begins walking under the hot sun, and Birchinal is surprised to see there are no signs of the algae, even if it all died there should be some traces. When they finally make it to HAB-1, they discover it's absolutely destroyed. This couldn't have been done by the weather because the structures had been designed to withstand even tornadoes, meaning something happened here. There's food, no air, and no water, so the guys have no choice but to accept their fate. There are only 16 minutes of oxygen left and the crew chats about the people they left at home. Santon decides to reminiscence near a cliff edge and points out that at least his piloting skills can't be blamed for this, but Pettingle wants him to take some responsibility anyway. This triggers a fight that ends with Pettingle hitting Santon, making him fall off the cliff. When Pettingle goes back to the others, he tells them Santon ended things for himself. Minutes afterward, their oxygen tanks run out, and Gallagher decides to open his helmet to take his last breath. However to his shock, Gallagher discovers he can breathe just fine. Pettingle and Birchinal follow his example and confirm they can breathe as well, although they can't explain why. Meanwhile Bowman receives a message from Houston telling her the ship's orbit will fail in 31 hours but they'll help her take off before then. Bowman is skeptical because ignition systems won't work. The guys search HAB-1 for anything useful again and find a radio, but it's broken too. This makes Birchinal realize that the little rover Earth sent in 97 should have a radio as well, so they should look for it. It's 4 kilometers from there and night is about to fall, thus they decide to leave in the morning to avoid freezing. 
they use the remaining rocket fuel from HB-1 to start a fire, and its light allows Amy to finally find them. Gallagher checks on the robot and notices it's pretty damaged but the navigational device still works, which means he should shut Amy down and take the device out before it breaks too. Amy hears this and reacts violently, pushing all the men away when they try to deactivate it. Birchinal tries to hit it with a pipe, but Amy cuts it into little pieces before hitting the man, breaking one of his ribs. Then Amy runs away, reuniting with its drone on the way. Gallagher explains to the others that Amy is using guerrilla tactics and will come back later to kill them one by one, he also discovers the robot jam the transmitters to stop them from knowing where it is. In the morning, Bowman manages to fix the ignition systems with the guidance of Houston, but she tells them she'll try to save the crew before going back. The guys wake up and relieve themselves as a joke to claim the territory in the name of humanity, then they go looking for the old rover. As soon as they find it, Gallagher takes its radio and fixes the frequency to match the new one, but no matter how hard they try, they can't contact Bowman. After two hours of failed tries, Bowman is ready to leave for Earth and Gallagher's about to throw the radio away, but at that moment Houston detects the rover's frequency and connects it to the ship. The guys finally get to talk to Bowman, who hears the whole story and promises she'll find a way to rescue them. A few moments later, Bowman contacts the guys again to inform them of a 30-year-old Russian rock probe called Cosmos that failed to launch many years ago. They'll have to fix it, but it's the only chance they got, and they only have 19 hours to do it before Bowman has to go back to Earth. Bowman also has to keep working on some repairs, meaning she'll be in blackout on the dark side and she won't talk to them again until later. Before hanging up, Gallagher tells Bowman he's glad to hear her voice again, which makes her remember the time they almost kissed a few weeks ago. The guys begin making their way to the probe, unaware that Amy is following them. Suddenly Pettingle notices something moving in the distance, but the others can't see it and ask him to keep moving. Nearby, a bunch of alien insects begins moving in the same direction. Sometime later, Bowman checks on the crew and asks Gallagher to take his calm off to talk in private. She informs him that the probe only has room for two people and apologizes before going back to her work. Gallagher doesn't tell the others about this issue yet and concentrates on helping Birchinal walk when his body begins feeling weak because of the broken rib. When night falls, a big ice storm comes their way, so the trio has to hide inside an opening on a hill. Thanks to the storm, Amy has trouble coming closer. The guys discuss the fact they don't have many hours left to find the probe, and Gallagher finally confesses only two of them can make it back. He volunteers to stay behind, but Pettingle doesn't believe him because he thinks Gallagher suspects him of killing Santon. Birchinal cuts in and says he doesn't trust him either and confirms he indeed wants to leave Pettingle behind. A few hours pass and Bowman receives a message from Houston telling her she needs to come back because there's no way the crew survived that storm. She tries to contact the crew to no avail. It turns out that after Gallagher and Birchinal fell asleep, Pettingle took the radio and ran away in order to get to the probe first. Now that he is outside and exposed, Amy Sneak attacks him and kills him in seconds. Birchinal and Gallagher see this on the suit comms and come out of the cave to retrieve the radio. On their way to Pettingle's body, Birchinal is shocked to see algae, and he can't understand why it only grows here. Gallagher retrieves the radio and tries to contact Bowman while Birchinal looks more closely at the body, unaware that the bugs are running inside the suit. Using a torch lighter, Birchinal tries to cut the suit open, but this ignites the little aliens. Birchinal finally notices them and as he captures two of them, he deduces their nematodes who have been eating the algae. This explains why the plant suddenly started disappearing, the nematodes eat it and produce oxygen in return as if they were trees. The more the guys walk, the more algae they find. Birchinal begins dripping blood from his mouth because of his broken rib and gets the attention of the bugs, which attack him by eating through his suit. Accepting his fate, Birchinal throws his suit to Gallagher so he can have extra air for the trip, he also gives him the tube with the bugs so Earth can study them and produce cleaner air. Then Birchinal waits for the insects to cover his body and lights the torch to bring all the little aliens down with him. Bowman sees all this from the ship and calls Gallagher to check on him. After explaining what happened, Gallagher admits he's ready to give up, but Bowman changes his mind by pointing out he can't let the crew's sacrifices be in vain. Gallagher puts himself together and runs until he finds the probe, which he immediately begins working on with Bowman's guidance. The system works but unfortunately the probe's battery is dead, so Gallagher's stuck here after all. Thinking this is the end, Gallagher tells Bowman that he misses her and that he should have kissed her. Bowman agrees and with tears in her eyes, she begins getting ready to return. At that moment, Amy's drone finds Gallagher, and he realizes it has batteries he could steal. He immediately begins preparing a trap using the probe itself, letting Amy come as close as it wants. When the robot is about to go for his heart, Gallagher dodges the attack and releases an airbag soaked in fuel that traps Amy, allowing Gallagher to set it on fire. At that moment, Amy activates its self-destruct system, so Gallagher rushes to take out the battery and jumps out of the way right before the drone crashes against Amy to make it explode. Afterward, Gallagher finishes fixing the probe and launches it with him inside to go after Bowman, who is about to leave for Earth. Unfortunately the probe loses power in the middle of the way, but Bowman sees it and uses the space walk rope to jump off the ship and retrieve the probe. 
Because of the lack of power, the probe doesn't have oxygen either, so by the time Bowman opens it Gallagher is unconscious. Bowman takes Gallagher's suit off and begins applying CPR until Gallagher wakes up, happily asking her to take them home. Sometime later, Bowman gets a message from Houston after they took a look at the information about the insects, apparently everyone on Earth thinks of Gallagher as a hero now. Gallagher reveals he's also brought a rock from Mars to give to Shantila's granddaughter as a memento. Bowman can see Gallagher has grown a lot and finally kisses him, thinking about how they have six months to get to know each other better before they make it to Earth. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.